Pigs.com's Matt Weaver, Jared Kelly here on a Tuesday afternoon recapping Indiana's week one win over FIU, uh, talking about Kurt Signetti's Monday press conference and looking ahead to Friday's week two game against Western Illinois. Matt, Indiana wins 31-7 to against FIU. Obviously, we had a ton of postgame content on this, but uh, just generally, you know, now that you've had some time, you know, a few days to, to reflect on this game, you put out the uh, pro football focus grades, obviously, uh, which gave you a little bit better idea of what we're what we're looking at from that game. Uh, just, did anything stand out to you coming out of that game now that you've had some time to, to think about it? No, and I mean, you know, the PFF grades are fun to do, and it, it was a fun story to do. And, you know, I think you've got to take them a little bit with a grain of salt just because, you know, obviously they don't know what the play calls are and all that kind of thing. But I think there, I think there, there is some legitimacy to, to what they do. Um, you know, I, I said a little surprised Aiden Fisher's grade was so low. I think maybe because he got such a low tackling grade. Um, but, um, you know, the, the positions that, um, you know, live looked good to us, you know, kind of like D-line, especially the interior, um, you know, offensive line in the run game. Those those graded out pretty well, kind of where you expected. So, um, you know, game one, you know, thing is, it, like I said after the game, if, if you would have told me the defense was going to be how the offense after the first game, um, I would have been I would to me, I'd be very optimistic because I think this offense is going to be fine. I'm not I, I'm not worried about the offense. Um, you know, it was a little bit, um, you know, uh, kind of not great in the second half. But you know, it's, to me, that's you know, it's just first game, you know, kind of working the kinks out. I, you know, this this week's not going to be a great test. We'll find out better in two weeks um, yeah. or a little less than two weeks when they play UCLA. But overall, I thought it was a positive first game for Signetti and his staff. Yeah, the UCLA did not look great week one. And obviously, we'll talk about that uh, when that game nears. But that one looks more and more manageable, uh, you know, as the days go by, as we see uh, how UCLA has shaken out. Uh, this season. Uh, but going on to FIU, uh, obviously the run game you said, like you said, was tremendous. Uh, we did not see Indiana push the ball a whole lot. Curtis Rugg only 180 yards and a touchdown. Uh, you know, I, I know there are a lot of fans who are, um, you know, a little concerned about the lack of second half production. Uh, and Kurt Sinani wasn't really, um, you know, he didn't really give a, 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 you know, a percentage of how open the playbook was. Uh, but you'd have to imagine this is going to be an offense, you know, that, you know, they showed, you know, very basic um, you know, foundation of what they can be. And going forward, um, I do wonder how much they're going to lean on the run game. Uh, but you'd have to imagine that the the the, the passing playbook is going to open a little bit, right? Yeah, and and, and if there is if there's one concern with the, the you know I've talked about the skill positions and, and how much I like them. If there's one little if there actually a little bit one concern is do they have that guy to kind of take the top off of defense? Co- Anderson Kobe looks like he could do that. Um, you know, I mean, McCauley, you can throw the ball down to, even though he may not be a burner, he's got that size to make plays, but that's the one thing you wonder about. Can you, cause you can't always go seven, eight, 10 plays. Occasionally you need to get some chunk plays. So that would be my, you know, my, my kind of one concern. I, I think you can find that guy, but you know, that's the one thing is, is, you know, and Kobe did not play a ton. So, you know, when he's in there, it looks like they're going to throw the ball down the field. So, um, and then the offensive line, cause they've been kind of beaten up with injuries. Um, I, I think the starting five will be fine. Um, it's just if anybody goes down, you know, you're you, you could be playing a true freshman or or you're a registered freshman, somebody who hasn't played basically at all. Yeah, it, you you mentioned Donovan McCauley. Uh, we heard an update about him on Monday. Kurt Signetti said he's basically day to day. Didn't specify what the injury was, and then uh, running back uh, Kalon Black he only got one carry against FIU. I wasn't too sure what that was about, but yesterday uh, Signetti had said that uh, he was dealing with a little bit of hamstring hamstring issue, but uh, he didn't expect either of those injuries to be major. Uh, Matt, the, the, the blocking, obviously, you know, we we're going into this game wondering what the starting five was going to look like up front. Um, you know, obviously the run blocking was terrific, but the pass blocking, did that give you a little bit of pause? Curtis Rooks took two sacks. He was under pressure, um, you know, a couple times. And he, you know, he did well, obviously, to to make something out of nothing, a, a couple of those scrambles. Um, does that give you a little bit of pause on the, the pass, protection, pass protection against an FIU team like that? No, I mean it's you know it's it's not what you want to see, but you know I think you know and I'm not an o uh, an O line coach or never played the position, but you know I you know when you're run blocking, you're firing off the ball, you're being aggressive, you're going after guys. Been pass blocking, I think it's a little bit more working as a, as a, you're not that you're working as a unit in run blocking, but you know there's twists and stunts and you got to pick guys up and you know that kind of stuff. And I think that's just stuff that yeah, that'll come in time. Um, you know, like I said. While this week is good for it, 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 it's it's you should get through it, uh, you know, with a relatively easy win and not have to play guys very long. Your your main guys, 
it's not going to be the greatest tune-up. It's almost going to be like a glorified scrimmage. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful of Western Illinois, but it is what it is. Um, you know, that's what it's going to be. So, but I, I mean, those are the things. Bob boasts that last year that O line got better as the season went along. They they've gotten better as, they, and you know, this is the first time those five guys have played together in a game. Um, I I expect them, you know, to get better. I, I would say the one thing that was a little bit concerning, and like I said, you take these grades with a grain of salt. But Trey Weddings past blocking grade was really poor it was like 48 if i remember right 48 point something um you know now some of that like i said who knows maybe there were things that he would he did right and it made him look bad and somebody else screwed up i don't know but the bottom line is there was in the nice after the game this pressure seemed to be coming off the edges more so um and it looked more to the right side because carter smith's grade if if that was phenomenal i mean he was like an nfl lover nfl level offensive lineman in that game so that's the only thing but wedding's a, a veteran guy and, you know, like I said, if this lingers, then, yeah, it'll be more of a concern. But, you know, one game in, I, I'm not I'm not going to get worked up about that. I, I think they'll be fine. And I think, like I said, I think the offense is going to be is going to be OK. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I wrote a story about this, uh, I think, in fall camp or just before um, just how important, you know, Bob Bostad uh, coming back from the previous staff was. And uh, that first game kind of uh, validated, you know, a lot of that talk. Uh, you know, th- there might not be a more important decision that Signetti made this offseason than, than keeping Bo Stadter there, <clears throat> uh, you know, because obviously we saw what he did in the run game. Uh, you'd like to see a little bit better pass protection going forward. But, um, you know, it's hard to it's hard to complain about Indiana's, uh, uh, you know, blocking up front with with all the new pieces uh, that they had to put together in two weeks uh, going into that week one. All right. Uh, I do want to touch on the defense here because uh, this was very interesting. You know, we were, we were looking for certain players that we thought were going to get on the field a ton. Uh, did not see a lot of them. Uh, you know, Jacob Mangan Farrar comes to comes to mind. I know you did the snap counts on them. I think he was under 20. Um, he had under 20 snaps against FIU. And then you had guys like walk-ons. Um, you know, Andrew Turvey was in there. Um, I think he had a sack as well. Uh, and then we didn't see them rotate a whole bunch of, you know, across the defense. We didn't see a whole bunch of rotating. Um, did that did that surprise you a little bit that, that Indiana kind of stuck with its starters, especially in a, in a week one game? Yeah, and I and I mean we I you know we talked about during the game you know up in the press box that um, there was basically almost no rotating at in the secondary and I'm not saying you do a ton but occasionally you'll rotate some guys in um, you know Nick Toomer's another guy that basically didn't hardly got any playing time whatsoever so a little bit surprised it's one game in maybe they had a plan um, you know I like I said I don't think we're gonna get a great idea for the for the um, rotation this week either because I mean honestly um, you know start of the third quarter they should be empty in the bench um in this game so we'll you know we'll see how that goes but you know if a guy like andrew turvey can come up and give you some production um you know and and you know hopefully at some point mangum farrar is more of a more of a uh, has more of a role in the defense but um yeah a little surprised at some of the the lack of some of the guys that didn't play as much you know what i mean and and Pleasantly surprised with guys like Josh Sanwinetti and um, and Isaiah Jones, who, you know, Sanwinetti was a big time recruit and it just never really has come together for him. Maybe this is the year in his sixth year of college football because uh, he had a good game. And obviously Isaiah Jones looked like a different player than he's looked the first couple of years. So, you know, there may be some of those guys who we expected to play a lot who don't play as much and guys we didn't really count on who who become factors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all offseason we heard from Signetti uh, and his staff, you know, um, we're going to put the best guys on the field. Uh, you know, you better bring it in practice. Otherwise, you're not going to get on the field. Uh, and that week one was kind of eye opening. You know, a lot of people you know, think that's coach speak. Uh, this staff is, is fully bought into the into that philosophy. And, and we saw it uh, in week one. Uh, the, the, you know, up front uh, in, in the front seven, Indiana was terrific against FIU, uh, eight tackles for loss, which is a hallmark of a Brian Haynes, Pat Coons defense. Uh, and then they had also had four sacks. Um, you know, some of that probably was against the, you know, lesser competition in FIU. Some of that had to do with it. Um, but, you know, eight, you cut, you're, you're walking out of week one with the new coaching staff, revamped defensive line with eight TFLs, four sacks. Um, you know, you, you have to like, a, you know, at least be encouraged by that. Right. Yeah, and and it's you know we've seen in the past any defenses where you know the other team misses some plays or you know there's a, you know they, their guys are they had one drive they literally had one drive the entire game where they did anything this defense completely shut them down and I'm not saying FIU some juggernaut you know but I I think they will be better than they were now they were four and eight so it's not like they could be a whole lot worse but this isn't this isn't the worst D one team you could play they're not they're not great but they do have some athletes their quarterback can be dangerous. So I was, you know, that that to me is what I was looking for. And this D line dominated up front. Um, they could not run the ball at all. 
Um, so, you know, th that, that's very encouraging, you know, and, and I thought they, like you said, they played well. And I mean, CJ West didn't play a ton of snaps. I think it was like 18, but he was really good. Uh, James Carpenter, I thought played well. I mean, it was, it was a small sample size at the end of the game, but it's interesting. Mario Landino is a guy who came in, remember he came in in January. So he's, he's had, you know, what, nine, 10 months of college football, weight training, um, coaching, you know, he's a guy that they really liked when they were at JMU. They flipped him to Indiana, and he may be a guy as the season goes along. I know they said a lot of freshmen aren't going to play. He may be a guy that does play more than the four games and is, you know, gets in that rotation on the de of the defensive line. Yeah. Uh, wrapping this game up, I, I did, you know, obviously Signe kind of stirred stirred the pot a little bit with this comments post game, um, you know, about the fans and, and you know, s sort of the consternation there. Um, you know, we saw a great student turnout, uh, you know, to, to start the game, but obviously it really, really thinned out in the third, fourth quarter. And some of that was, you know, just Indiana kind of slowing down there. And, but let's be honest, even if Indiana was pouring it on FIU, I don't think a lot of those fans would have stayed because it would have been whatever, 50 to seven or whatever. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because, you know, it's it's obviously a very, you know, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, right? Where, where you know, Indiana fans, you know, they want a program built. They want a true coach that can get them, you know, consistently uh, to bowl games. But then, you know, week one comes, you finally get the coach that you had hoped for. And then, you know, the fans trickle out. Um, so, so just, did you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, I follow this program and obviously, you know, uh, you've been a fan of this since I was a little kid. So I've, I've seen, you know, the fan interest or lack thereof, uh, you know, for a long time. You know, I I get it. I mean, it was, it, it you know, weather-wise, it was a warm day. Um, it wasn't, it was not the most entertaining game in the world. Um, but this, the, the one thing, you know, that I will point to, and, and fans aren't going to hear this, Purdue has had bad teams and they get good crowds at Ross Side Stadium. Their place was packed on Saturday and they played a crappy Indiana State team. And they won 49 nothing, but I'm not, I, I got to think that wasn't the most entertaining game in the world. You know, I mean, obviously they blew them out. The fans liked it, but, you know, there's obviously they're able to do something that Indiana's able to do. Now, there's been years past where Purdue's had crappy crowds when they were awful under Daryl Hazel. But I mean, you know, they weren't very good last year and they showed up this year. And, you know, and there's, and there were seasons under Braum where they had kind of fallen. And then the first game the next year, they showed up or whatever. So, and I, I'm, not, I'm just pointing them out just because, you know, I just happened to see a picture of their stadium from Saturday and it was packed. At least it looked packed to me. So, you know, I, but I also understand it. Indiana fans have been, you know, kicked in the teeth by this program. And, and quite honestly, it's been an embarrassing program for a number of years. So I understand. And he said after the game, he said, you got to win. I mean, he, you know, while he was disappointed, he also understands, you know, what the, I think he, to as much as he can understand it from an outside view, the climate of Indiana football, but you got to win, you know, uh, I'll be interested, you know, this Friday, we'll see. It's Western Illinois. It's a Friday night. You know, you were a student there. It's, you know, you know, that they're going to want to go to parties or the bar or whatever. To me, the telltale sign is if you beat UCLA, what's it look like when you come back against Charlotte? That will be the telltale sign for me for this fan base. If you're three and oh, and I know it's just Charlotte, but that'll be the telltale sign. What's the crowd look like for that game? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Uh, coming out of the UCLA game. I do wonder with Signetti. You know, obviously you can talk about how much, you know, you 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 understand how big of an undertaking it is. But for him to actually see it on game day, and see these fans trickle out. I wonder if that was a little eye opening for him and, and you know, maybe um, kind of gave him a, a better sense of, you know, how much work this is really going to take. You know, it's not going to take one game, not, it's not gonna, definitely not going to take one offseason of talking. Uh, to get these fans to fully buy in. Uh, and I will say, you know, I was a student there, I think three years ago now. Um, it, this is, you know, this argument, I feel, and this is just my opinion, th this argument that, you know, uh, you know, Indiana is a great bar school, a great party school. These kids want to go tailgate, whatever, go to the bars. That's everywhere in the SEC. And those those fans don't trickle out either. And these are, you know, there are some, you know, very mediocre SEC teams who are consistently packing their stadiums. You don't see fans leaving at halftime. Um, so, so I feel like the argument about, you know, these kids just want to go have fun, whatever, that doesn't happen at big time, you know, football schools. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, granted, it was hot. I understand that the student section is right in the sun. Um, but at, at, at a certain point, right, as a fan, I feel like you can't ask, you know, the world of the program and then not, you know, at least show some of it back. Um, so, so like you said, that it is going to be definitely a bit of a change, um, you know, going forward. And, and in Signetti, you know, like you said, you're just going to have to win. It's really uh, the, the, the end-all, be-all uh, if you want to get fans in the stadium and staying. Um, all right, let's talk about Monday, Matt. You were there yesterday for Signetti's uh, press conference coming out of the FIU game. 
Um, just just general takeaways. He didn't say a whole lot besides, you know, the injury updates and, and whatnot, but any, anything caught your eye there? No, I mean, he seemed honestly, he seemed like he was a, in, a, in a pretty good mood. I mean, you know, I mean, he's he obviously – Kurt you know, is not the guy that's going to be a lot of you know warm and fuzzies all the time. He's he's very serious and no nonsense. You know, I call him a ball coach because that's what he is. But after the press conference, uh, somebody made a comment. He was drinking a, a, a Gatorade Zero or whatever, and somebody made a comment about. He just the, the back and forth with the media. He actually came, was walking towards the door and came back in and talked to him for to us for a few minutes. Was obviously, nothing. I mean, I say off the record, it wasn't anything. You know, just it was about Gatorade. So, but anyways, he, he just, I, that's one thing I took is he seemed like he was in a good mood. He, I think he was pleased overall with the performance as far as anything he said, um, you know, nothing really. I mean, you know, he did not say this. I have not heard this. So this is not source info, but when he described Don McCauley as day to day and what we saw, it, it looked like he took a shot to the head. My guess is he got, he was in concussion protocol, but that is a total guess. So I don't want people to think I'm saying that he has a concussion. But to me, day to day, that's usually what you hear for a concussion because you have to wait to see if they can clear all the different, you know, steps they have to clear to get cleared. And plus, it just looked like he took a shot to the head. I mean, it almost could have looked like he could have been reviewed for targeting. Um, so but other than that, I mean, like I said, he didn't he didn't say anything earth shattering, which I, I don't think Kurt is ever going to say anything earth shattering. Yeah, unless he's talking about Googling him. <laughs> uh yeah yeah mccall you know the nice thing too about week two and scheduling western illinois and obviously you don't go into a season uh projecting injuries but going against western illinois um you know if mccauley does have to to miss time you know that's this is the uh this is the prime opportunity to, to have to skip a week um you know we also didn't see ej williams he was also out of the last game um so it did give a, a you know a couple other receivers some um you know more reps that they probably wouldn't have gotten um you know if, if those two were in the game so we'll see week two uh, what comes of that? I did think. Uh, sorry, what was that? Yeah, well, and real quick, you, good thing you mentioned. I forgot. But EJ Williams, another guy I talked about deep threats. He's a guy that could give you some deep threat, you know, down the field, some big plays. So I, let me interrupt you, but it just when you mentioned his name, I've, I actually forgot about him because we haven't seen him basically all fall camp, and and um and obviously didn't see him in game one. So just wanted to throw that in there. He's another guy that could give you some big play p- potential. So hopefully they can get him back, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, Signetti has said, you know, he hasn't been on the practice field very much this offseason, so uh, he's definitely gonna have to work his way uh, into that rotation once once he's back healthy. Uh, the one, the one other thing I did want to mention about Signetti's press conference on Monday, um, I, I did like how you know it, it, this is a very small thing, but when he was asked about playing football on Fridays, he was just very straight to the point. Said, you know, we play when they ask us to. Um, you know, we saw with Tom Allen, he kind of made a big deal out of Friday games, and you know. Coaches can have whatever opinions they want and obviously speak whatever, um, you know, thoughts they have. But but I kind of like that Signetti, um, you know, just really disregarded that question because it was kind of a uh, <laughs> you, you're kind of fishing for something there. So he kind of just played it off, um, which, you know, if you're trying to run a big time program, you got to do things like that. Yeah. And I understand where Tom out. He was a high school coach for many years in this state and obviously down in Florida. And I get it. I, I understand why some people don't like Friday night games. But listen, it is what it is. TV dictates things now. They, they determine, I, I would assume, I don't know if Indiana made the decision to play that Friday night or if that's a Big Ten. I would assume it's TV, but I don't know. The bottom line is, when, if you're complaining about that, to me, that kind of, I, I to me, I wonder if that seeps into the team. Like, we don't want to be here. It's Friday. I mean, you, you got to show up. I don't care if they tell you to play on Monday morning at 8 a.m. or whatever it may be. You got to show up and play the game. Um, that's your job. You know, that's what the coaches get paid for. Now, obviously, that's what the players are getting paid for. Um so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's not, I mean, I'll, I'll say selfishly, you know, maybe I don't know about you selfishly. I kind of like it because now I can watch football all day on Saturday, which normally we can't because we're in the press box. And, and obviously we like being up there and, and, and covering the IU program, but it's also sometimes nice to watch other teams and just kind of relax for on a Saturday. So, you know, there's, there's, there's good and bad with it, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I like that. He was like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going down that road. It is what it is. We're going to play and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be interesting. First Friday game in the Signetti era. Uh, kickoff is at 7 o'clock at Memorial Stadium. Uh, Western Illinois, Matt, I know you were able to find a reporter there that you'll put out later in the week for uh, your your uh, Western Illinois preview. This is a team that hasn't won a game since 2022. They lost uh, by almost 40 points. It was 39 against Northern Illinois in week one. Uh, you know, this is a game that Indiana, I don't know what the spread is right now, but this is a game that Indiana should dominate. They should uh, run away with it early. Like you, you, like you said before, get the start, uh, get the starters out of the game by the third quarter. Um, By all accounts, you know, you're probably not going to take 
a whole lot away from this game just because of the caliber of opponent. Uh, but is there anything that you're looking for here that, that we didn't see week one or that you're hoping to see more of? Uh, I mean, like you should be able to run the ball. I mean, just looking at the box score real quick, uh, Northern Illinois, 41 carries for 312 yards. So they average uh, seven and a half uh, yards per carry. Um, their quarterback, their starting quarterback was 18 out of 20 with five touchdowns um, for 300. I mean, like you should be able to do whatever you want. I mean, you really should. Um, you know, to me, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to, you know, um, and not that if he plays the second half, but, you know, getting some guys in, um, you know, maybe this is a game where you could play some true freshmen who normally maybe wouldn't play. Um, or, or are you playing on red shirt and you only play in the four games? Um, you know, getting some guys on the old line some time, getting uh, um, Damola Ajani, um, Austin Liebfried, um, uh, Austin Barrett, um, you know, getting some of these guys snaps. I know it's not what they're going to see if they have to play later, but the bottom line is it's still different than high school. Um, getting these guys, getting those guys some snaps, maybe Mario Landino gets more Reloja Hardy. Uh, another freshman at linebacker um, uh, who played in the in the first game. So, you know, getting some of these guys uh, some time in there, you know, maybe some of these younger tight ends, Sam West, um, you know, guys like that. I, I'm just looking, you know, stay healthy is the biggest thing. Uh, you know, we've talked about that before. Stay healthy. Don't get hurt. Um, but, yeah, get, get guys some snaps and, you know, get ready. Get ready for um, obviously what is to me is a, is a big game um, the following week out at UCLA. Yeah. Uh, I also th I also think it's, you know, it's important for Indiana to pour it on and not only pour it on, but keep their foot on the gas, because that was obviously yeah. a big you know emphasis point coming out of FIU. Um, you know, if you have a chance to go up 40 in the first half, you know, you got to do it. You know, you can't you can't even even that one possession, you know, on defense, that Indiana gave up the touchdown. Um, you know, that's that's one of the things that, that Signetti is trying to get rid of in this program. Um, you know, a, a, a team like uh, Western Illinois, which you have no problem, uh, you know, talent wise, skill wise, you know, put them away early. Um, you know, don't don't even allow them to even think that this is a game for even a minute. Um, you know, and and you know, kind of see those improvements and and not a, not just the on field performance, but also the uh, the sort of culture that Signetti is trying to build as well. I also do. Uh, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of the the quarterback besides Curtis Rourke against FIU. Um, I will be interested to see what Taven Jackson can do in in extended time, assuming he gets on the field uh, a good bit against Western Illinois, and then Tyler Cherry too. Um, you know, this is a guy four star quarterback, um, obviously a third on the depth chart right now but um i would like to see what he can do uh in, in a game setting and, and you know sort of see his, see his arm when and when, when the bullets are flying as well um matt any 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 true freshman retro freshman i know you know i know you mentioned a lot on the offensive line there um any other guys that you you know you think could benefit from from these kind of games where they can get in and, and you know sort of help them in their de development a little bit um yeah, well, mainly the young guys. I mean, you know, we, we saw him in the first game, but a guy like Andrew Turvey, he may get even more extended run. I mean, he may play, you know, and obviously if he's in your rotation, you don't want to maybe play him too much, but he's a guy maybe you, you get some more snaps to. Um, you know, maybe some guys in the secondary. I'm trying to think, you know, uh, like I said, it's it just it was interesting, you know, like Terry Jones. I mean, you wouldn't think a guy that you bring over from Old Dominion who's like a fifth-year senior that he would get run against the FCS team, but, I, you know, maybe he's just not up to speed yet. Um, you know, running back, you know, Elijah Green looked good. I get it was at the end of the game when the game was basically over, but I mean, he showed some real burst. Um, you know, and I thought all the running backs looked good, but he showed, I thought, some real burst. Some, you know, maybe have, you know, maybe, maybe Kobe Martin gets to play in this game. He, he, I, it's obvious that they're probably going to redshirt him, but maybe that's a guy that you, you, if you, if he dresses, you play him. You know, um, like I said, I, to me, this is the game you where you get as you can get guys in the game who, um, and like you said, port, what's important to me about porting on is when if you do go to those backups, the level of play is going to drop a little bit, but it doesn't drop significantly. You know, you still you're still dominating a team. You should dominate even with your backup. So that'll be something I'm kind of looking forward to because I, you know, I, I anticipate the backups getting a lot of playing time this week, and and hopefully they can maintain that level of play because they may be needed game seven, game eight, whatever it may be. They may be needed down the road if somebody's banged up and misses a game or two.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Elijah Green, and I, I meant to I meant to um, you know bring him up uh, when we we're recapping FIU. Uh, you know, he didn't make his way. You know, we, we've talked, we've heard something they talk about. You know, he he uh, he's used a three running back rotation in the past uh, at his previous stops. Uh, it was interesting that he was kind of the fourth guy out. Elijah Green was, um, but yeah, he showed tremendous top end speed. Uh, I liked him a lot when I saw him. You know, in the spring game, and then you know just going through fall camp. Um, do do you think there's a way that Indiana could find you know? Uh, snaps for four guys or is that asking a lot I mean you probably could I mean you'd have to you know it's it's just who do you take snaps away from obviously Kalon Black we, we didn't know during the game we were both like what's going on because he had one carry um and but we found out afterwards why um you know it's just who do you take snaps away I mean I thought Tyson Lawton uh looked terrific um uh Justice uh Ellison looked terrific um so it's just you know who do you take snaps from? but if, I mean if he can kind of give you that, that's that's the kind of you know big play, big chunk kind of guy, um, you know. And I think they, you know, I think Ellis has got some bursts too. But I mean, you know, he looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Like I said, it was at the end of the game, but I mean, there was guys who had angles and he just blew by them. I mean, it looked like you know you watched the highlight uh, and it looked like he kind of got tackled and, and he really had an extra gear. So, um, you know, to me, you try to get those guys on the field, but it's going to be tough because it's. It, I mean, playing three guys is hard. You think about it, I think they had 71 snaps. And obviously, you're not going to run the ball 71 times. So let's just say you run it even half the time. I mean, you're talking 35. If you play a few more snaps, 35 to 40 snaps, it, that's, that's you know, you're splitting it four ways. It's just it's tough for guys to get into a rhythm. So, you know, that's for them to work out. But it's a nice problem to have. I mean, if that's your fourth running back, you got a pretty good running back room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the, and the nice thing, too, and I had mentioned us on the board, too, but uh, uh, Green and uh, Kalon Black both have another year of eligibility past this year. Um, you know, so so these snaps this year could be could be important for setting up, uh, you know, the running back room uh, for next year as well. All right, Matt, uh, Friday night kickoff. Uh, any any lingering thoughts coming out of the FIU game going into this week? No, I mean, you know, come out, take care of business, um, you know, uh, you know, well, one question I would I would never ask, but I'd love to know is um, has has the staff already started game planning for UCLA? Like, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, disrespectful to Western LA, but it is what it is. I mean, what I think you mentioned they've lost 20. Is it five? Yeah, 25. 25 games in a row. I mean, Northern Illinois is decent, but I mean, I just looked them up and not the FPI index on ESPN's the you know, end all be all, but they're like 92nd in the country. So they're like a bottom third, bottom fourth team. And they, they just blew them out. I mean, that was a 54. That was like a 54 to eight game. They got a touchdown late Western did. So, I mean, you know, like, are you know, I'm not saying you don't, you don't take it seriously, but like, this is honestly one of the games where you can show up and, and win the game. And like, I'm with you, you need to show up and you need to look like the big 10 team. And I mean, if you, if you can drop, I'm not saying you try to drop 60, but if you drop 60, this game should be 40 something to nothing at halftime, in my opinion. You should have six, seven touchdowns at halftime. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, we'll see what Indiana can do on Friday and then looking ahead to a big, big game against UCLA for the Big Ten opener in week three. Uh, that'll do it for us, Matt Weaver, Jared Kelly. We'll have a lot more coming on the site throughout the week leading up to Friday's game and then obviously a ton of game coverage on Friday. We'll catch you guys over on peaks.com.